Hello and welcome back to our series on electrical engineering. Tonight, our topic of conversation is Downloading and Installing Circuit Maker 2000. In our course, we'll put the theory to the test in two lab environments. The electronics labs on the first floor, on the third floor, and on the fourth floor in the MacLeod building during the scheduled lab sessions, and also on the virtual lab provided by Circuit Maker 2000, which you can install in your own computers and which is available only for Windows, not for Mac OS. You can start using Circuit Maker right now. Just follow the instructions in this tutorial to download it and to install it. Circuit Maker released a free student version that is as powerful as the professional one, but with a smaller library of devices, which is a limitation that will not affect us in this course. The first thing is to go to our course website. In the main menu on the left side of the screen, select Free Software. Then scroll down to the very bottom. There you will find the link to download Circuit Maker Free Student Version. You will need the login and the password for our website, of course. I am using Chrome, so the downloaded file shows up here at the bottom of the screen. Now I click on it to run it and the installation process begins. It is very straightforward. By default it will install the circuit maker in its own subdirectory below the root of drive C. You may change that at your own convenience. By the way, it works both on old Windows XP, on Windows Vista, and on the new Windows 7 64 bits. I've tried it, but it will not work on Mac OS. Now that it's installed, let's run it. Let's run Circuit Maker for the first time. It opens a blank sub window for you to create your first circuit. We will use only resistors and independent voltage sources this time. It's our first circuit after all, huh? Later, we'll explore the main menu of the software. Right now, bear with me. I click the V key and the voltage source appears. With the mouse, I move it and with the right button, I can rotate it counterclockwise. And with the left button, I set it on the canvas. Click. There, we have our first component. Now click on the R key and presto, a resistor appears. By the way, F4 zooms in or out as necessary to fit the entire circuit in the window. We will use this F4 repeatedly as we set the circuit. Now using the mouse and its buttons the same way as before, I send the resistor on the canvas. Let me set a few more resistors. It is time to join them together. Wiring the circuit. Right click anywhere on the canvas. A pop-up menu appears. Choose the wire option. To wire together the components on the canvas already. The mouse arrow becomes a little crosshair. Move it over the tip of an element, let's say the positive of this source. Then click and hold. The tip goes red hot. We are shouldering after all, eh? Hold and drag the mouse over to the tip of the next component until the other tip goes also red hot and then release. Done. First wire is in place. Once more. And again. Now observe a different wiring technique. I will not click and hold this time. No. Here at the bottom of this source I click and release then I move down. Circuit Maker produces a perfectly vertical wire up to right here where I click. Click and release. 
and move the mouse to the right, Circuit Maker delivers a perfectly horizontal wire until we click again. Click and release, and one last click on this tip to end the wire. Done. And finally, one last to join the bottom of this resistor. Now, about the reference node. As in a real-life paper circuit simulation, Circuit Maker cannot solve the circuit without your choice of a reference node. Please refer to the video on voltages, the electric heights, to find out what I mean by a reference node. To set a reference node, click on the zero key and set that reference symbol on the canvas and near the node that you want to make your reference. Wire the symbol to the chosen node and we are ready for the simulation. Do you see this little running man up here? Click on it to run the simulation. The mouse has become a probe. If you click with it at any point in the circuit, this little multimeter will read how high in volts that point is above the chosen reference node. What about currents? Well, first a warning. The way Circuit Maker lets you read currents has nothing to do with how we do it in real life. In a real lab, even though it is way more convenient and easy, and that is why we do it that way in the ideal world of the software. Second warning, Circuit Maker has a funny convention for current directions. When you first select a component, when you click R for a resistor, for instance, the component appears either horizontal as a resistor or vertical as a source. Circuit Maker indicates as positive currents that flow from left to right in horizontal components and currents flowing from top to bottom in vertical components. And by that I mean elements that pop in the first time horizontal or pop in the first time as vertical components. OK, but this resistor here did not pop up as a vertical resistor originally. No, it was horizontal. We rotated it with the right button of the mouse. Exactly. And that's funny. But the designers of the great application circuit maker back in Australia, they chose to rotate counterclockwise. So, what used to be the left tip of a horizontal resistor is now at the bottom. That means that for this vertical resistor, a positive current is one going up from bottom to the top. Personally, I always rotate three times a resistor that will end up as vertical. So, its positive currents will flow downwards as in an element that appears vertically at first. And a vertical element, but I want to say it horizontally, only one rotation key is sufficient. That way, all left to right currents and all top to bottom currents are reported as positive currents by Circuit Maker. OK, let's read currents. Just move very carefully the mouse over the tip and the element proper until the little probe's letter V for voltage turns into a little I for current. When this little I appears, left click and the display up here shows the current flowing through the element. Nice, eh? What about power? First, another warning. Circuit Maker uses its own convention to say when an element is delivering power or when it is absorbing power. And it's kind of bizarre in my opinion, but that is the way it is. I still like Circuit Maker a lot. When the source is delivering power, Circuit Maker reports that power as positive. But when it's a positive element, the one that's absorbing power, Circuit Maker reports uh, that power as positive too. So, 
a positive rating for power in circuit maker means different things for different elements and that is a bit confusing and it's not the way we do things normally in industry or in the classroom. In the classroom and in industry an absorbed power is reported as positive and a delivered power is reported as negative regardless of what element we are considering. And for those power engineers who may be watching, I know, I know, I know, in a generation plant, it's the other way around. But this is a second year course, okay? Okay, but uh, measure the power already, you are thinking. Now, we slide the mouse carefully over the element until the probe displays a little P letter. Left click. And the display shows you the power in that element with the sign convention that we discussed. Before we leave for the day, let me tell you that normally I prefer to use a grid to keep things aligned. This way. At the very beginning, we click on Options and uh, select Grid or just press Ctrl G. Then, in this pop-up dialog, I activate Display Grid and Snap to Grid. This time, when I set an element, it will snap to the grid automatically, which will make the assembling much easier. One more thing. There are several other software packages available, like the very popular National Instruments Multisim but most of them are using the same actual software, SPICE, as the actual simulation engine under a license from its creators. And what they have done, including Circuit Maker, is to develop a very nice graphical interface for ease of use, because the original SPICE input is a text file and the output too. So, if you choose a different software, it's actually merely a choice of a different graphical interface and of course and of its corresponding device library. And that is all for now. Happy simulations and I hope to see you again in the next video. And that is the end of this lecture on electrical and computer engineering. Thank you very much. Thank you.